Welcome, Trade Hackers. Welcome to today's video update. Today's Wednesday, June 3rd, starting with the Trade Hacker question of the day. How do I get approved for options trading permission from my broker? I've been getting this a lot lately, this question by in the community and by email, partly because TD Ameritrade, for example, has become more and more strict on their options trading permission. Typically, you're automatically granted the ability to buy puts and calls. You got to apply for a little bit higher level of permission to trade defined risk spreads like vertical spreads, iron condors. And then you have to apply for an even higher permission level, what they call tier three, to trade uncovered options, short strangles, short calls, short straddles, all that good stuff. So we trade all those at Navigation Trading, and so we always encourage our members to apply for the highest possible permission available. Even if you're not going to use it right away, make sure you apply for it. Now, some people are applying for it when they open a new account and they're getting denied. TD Ameritrade, has, they've become more and more strict over the years, but most recently, as the volatility in the market has picked up, they've gotten even more strict due to the perceived risk of their brokerage firm. So they're, they're getting more strict on applications for this. And so what can a new subscriber do to get this options trading permission? Well, we've got a, a blog post and a video on our blog. Just go to blog.navigationtrading.com. Anything that you can think of, just search in the search bar. So just search permission, for example, and that's going to pop up this blog post, how to get approved for options trading permission. And there's some detailed information in this video about how to do it. What they're looking for is they want to see experience trading options. And you might say, well, how am I supposed to get experience if I don't have permission? Good question. This is a stupid rule by the brokerages not to allow you to get permission anyway. But there are some ways around it. There are some options trading kind of uh I guess call them courses on TD's website. You can go through that, send that to him, say, hey, here I passed. I took this training. Please approve me. It has to do, so it has to do with experience and perceived knowledge of options trading. Uh, obviously mentioned navigation trading, say that you're part of a group. We teach options trading. That can help. Second, financials. You know, the, the more net worth, the more assets that you can show or note that you have on the application, the better chance you have of getting approved. Net worth, cash flow, experience, and then what you put on your profile as your kind of investment investor profile. Are you a conservative investor? If you put down your conservative investor, they're probably not going to approve you. You've got to be looking at growth or speculation, those types of things. That's what they're looking for. But more details in this video. If you are having troubles or you've had troubles in the past, check it out. Uh, we've had really good success with some of our members following these steps and then, and then finally getting approved for that options trading permission. So Make sure you check that out as well as any, any other thing that you can think of. Just search on the blog and there's a ton of good info on a lot of different topics in there. All right, let's go to the platform, take a look at what's happening in the market. I mean, S&P is only at 40 now. The bell just rang about six minutes ago. It was up about 50 plus, but still, man, just a big move in stocks, right? I mean, on top of this run that we've seen, since March, just continuing that climb higher. And, you know, I mean, the, the obviously the Fed actions, the stimulus is doing what it wanted. The question is, how long will it last? And I know we've been kind of a broken record on this over the last couple months, but it's still a question, right? I mean, this thing just keeps going higher in the face of all the adversity going on. And, you know, at some point it is going to come undone. Now, I'm not saying we're going to crash, but I do still think that we're going to go below the March lows. Um, and so we'll see if that happens. Now, if you look at the NASDAQ, I mean, the NASDAQ is, I mean, it's 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 nearing all-time highs again. So tech has been extremely strong. Here's the all-time high, 97.63, and we're at about 96.88, so pretty close. S&P's not as close. If you take a look at that, we've re covered about 70% from the from the very top in the S&Ps. Uh, Russell is even further away than that, about 50% of the gains. So we've been talking about this a little bit, but there's really three things driving this market and the kind of the big major swings that you're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got travel, 
right? We've got Expedia up 5% today. We've got Delta Airlines up 7% today. So, you know, if you look at booking.com, the old price line up 4%. So all the travel stuff is having a heyday today, right? So that's just a sector that has, we've been seeing big swings in both up and down. Second sector, tech. Now tech is actually the lagger today. I mean, if you look at the NASDAQ, it's only up, it's up less than one half of a percent where the S&P is up 1.3, Dow's up over two, and Russell leading the way up 2.3%. So tech is definitely definitely lagging. And if you look at some of the big tech names, Facebook's down, Google's down. If you look at some of the others here, Intel is down, Netflix is down, NVIDIA's down, Qualcomm, Roku, all down. In, in fact, I mean, look at Roku down, sizable, over 6%. So tech not pushing. And that's, to me, that's a good, that's a good sign for, for the downside of the market. I mean, I've been saying, you know, once, once tech turns and starts to go down, I think that's going to drag the rest of the market with it. A, tech makes up a huge part of the NASDAQ, makes up a huge part of the S&P. So if tech does turn, uh, you know, look out, we, that's when we could start seeing some downside. The other big sector, banks. Banks, so, so banks and travel really having big days today. If you look at Bank of America up over 4%, City up over almost 5%. So banks up big, travel up big, tech not so much, but just kind of a mixed bag. And even with this big of an up day in the market, I mean, there's still a decent number of red on my watch list as far as, as, far as the different stocks go. I mean, obviously most of it's green, but you still see a lot of red. So we're certainly not seeing that correlation, that you know, 100% correlation in all the major stocks where when you have a, an absolute major move and everything is correlated, everything's moving one way, we're definitely not seeing that today. So we've, de- we, we've, got some, uh, we've got some red mixed in there. The other thing I wanna take a look at is bonds. If we look at bonds, I mean, bonds have been absolutely doing nothing. If we look at, obviously in March, we had this little, wild ride when the Fed was cutting interest rates and pumping money into the system. But ever since then, I mean, since March 23rd, I mean, look at this range in bonds. I mean, it's absolutely nothing. I mean, we're, we're down a percent today in bonds, but that's one of the biggest ranges we've seen in quite some time. And this thing has just been absolutely flat, nowhere to go, doesn't know what to do. You know, the downside, obviously, if, if we're looking at it as an inverse correlation to stocks, stocks at big, bonds are down, but it certainly hasn't been that way over the last couple months. So we'll be watching bonds closely, watching travel, tech, and banks. Hope that helps, everybody. Have a good evening. Talk to you tomorrow.